In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. Today is Wednesday, the 6th of May, 2020. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, life of the faithful, glory of the humble, blessedness of the just, listen kindly to the prayers of those who call on you, that they who thirst for what you generously promise may always have their fill of your plenty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 24 to chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. The Gospel from St. John, chapter 12, verses 44 to 50. I read from the first reading. In those days, the word of God grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their mission, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, a member of the court of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. O God, lay your hand upon our heads. O God, lay your hand upon our heads. Dear friends, if you would have been very keen, you would have realized a certain act performed in the church. It is, however, much more than an act, it is a right. By right, we mean it is a religious or solemn ceremony. Therefore, it should be done with prudence, piety, reverence, and in the right way. This right is the laying on of hands. It may not be too recognizable because it is rarely done, or perhaps because it is taken for granted. Now, who can lay hands? When, where, and for what reason or reasons? The laying on of hands is done twice, at ordination and during prayer and blessing of the sick. 
sometimes also done during blessings. Laying on of hands is a sign of invocation of the Holy Spirit. At ordination, the bishop lays his hands on the heads of those to be ordained, and priests also do sin. During anointing of the sick or prayer over and blessing of the sick, hands are laid as well on the sick. There is a difference between the laying on of hands at ordination and laying on of hands during anointing of and prayer for the sick. In today's first reading, we are told hands were laid on Barnabas and Saul and that empowered them and prepared them for their apostolic mission. The apostles laid hands on those who shared in their ministry. From apostolic tradition, the laying on of hands became an act of sharing in apostolic ministry. Only those on whose heads hands were laid shared in the ministry of the apostles. From the apostles down to their successors, this right is still maintained. Hands are laid on the heads of those who have a special role in apostolic mission. In this case, worthy of note is the fact that only those who already possess this power, who already have this authority and mandate, can share it out to others through the laying on of hands. You cannot give what you do not have. It becomes a form of transmission of the power and gift they already possess to the new recruits. Therefore, only a bishop and priests can lay hands on the heads of those to be ordained priests, who will from then begin to share in their ministry. St. Paul, writing to Timothy in his second letter, chapter 1, verse 6, says this to Timothy, Kindle afresh the gifts of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. It was also considered and linked with the role of leadership. To show one was chosen and approved by God for leadership, he was anointed and hands were laid on his head. In the book of Numbers, when Moses handed over leadership to Joshua, God instructed him to lay his hand on Joshua, confer Numbers chapter 27, verse 18. So, we are told, the one on whom God has placed his hands, you can do nothing. Likewise, in Acts chapter 6, verse 6, the apostles prayed and laid their hands on the seven men who were chosen to serve as deacons. When the apostles prayed, they laid their hands on them and empowered them for that service, that ministry as deacons. Beloved, this is what it means to lay hands on the head of someone. From apostolic trans tra tradition, which is transmission of power and a sharing in apostolic ministry. In the second case, during anointing of the sick or prayer for the sick, hands could also be laid. Jesus says in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 18, You will lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. There is healing that comes from a touch of faith. Jesus healed many people by laying his hands on them or by touching them. That healing touch becomes so because the Holy Spirit is imparted through that touch. Anyone, priests or even lay faithful baptized can lay their hands on the sick when praying for them. This is not limited only to apostolic tradition or apostolic ministry. Any baptized person can lay their hands on the sick and pray for them and bless them. But beloved, there is a difference in action between laying hands on the sick and laying hands at ordination to empower someone for ministry. The difference is in the place or the part of the body where hands should be laid. We all have the Holy Spirit by baptism and confirmation, but the priest has added grace because his hands are anointed. While lay faithful can also pray for the sick and lay their hands on them, yet only an, ord an ordained minister, that is a deacon or a priest, is allowed to lay his hands on the head of the sick person. Lay faithful can lay their hands on the shoulder or back of the sick person. The order for the blessing of the sick, authorized by the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, states 
in number 392, I quote, In the prayer of blessing, a minister who is a priest or deacon may, as circumstances suggest, lay his hands on the head of each sick person and then say the prayer of the blessing, end of quote. In the same document, number 394, concerning lay ministers, the document says, I quote, a lay minister traces the sign of the cross on the forehead of each sick person and says the prayer of blessing. End of quote. By implication, while the lay faithful, that is the baptized lay faithful, can also pray and bless the sick and lay hands on them, yet it should not be on the head of the sick person. This beautiful custom of laying on of hands was borrowed from apostolic tradition. It should not be abused or banalized. It should be done by the right persons at the right time and in the right way. The laying on of hands is also a sign of blessing. Priests, bishops, pastors, men of God, they bless people and pray for them and lay their hands on them. Some parents also bless their children by laying hands on them or signing the cross on their foreheads. Dear Lord, you continue to use unworthy instruments that we are as channels of your grace. Let the anointing of our hands continue to remain fresh. For those ordained, may they share in the ministry of your priesthood through the laying on of hands. For those sick on whom we lay our hands, may they receive your Holy Spirit and abundance of healing. And on those for whom we lay our hands imploring your blessing, May you not let them go empty-handed. Dear Lord, let your hand be placed upon our heads. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.